We are joined now by Nationals Trade Spokesperson uh, Todd McClay. Todd, welcome to the platform. Sean, good morning. All right, a free trade deal with Europe. Praise the Lord, pass the ammunition. Are our economic woes over? Is this the panacea to the problems of our well, export community? Look, you would hope so, and and from the press releases coming out of Brussels, you would expect so. But you will have seen that the dairy sector and the meat sector are very unhappy, and I think they are right to be. So I gave the, the deal a 6 out of 10 the other day based on the early information out. We're not actually going to see the detail for another few weeks. I think actually probably I was a little bit caught up then because as we dig into more deeply any gains around meat and dairy, and you've got to remember, sure, for anything New Zealand does, it's about bringing those agricultural barriers down so we can have better access for our two largest sectors, uh, meat and dairy. In that respect, it hasn't been delivered on. So sadly. is there anything for meat and dairy in this deal? Well, uh, here's the interesting thing, and we'll dig into, I'll dig into this a little bit more this week. So we have a term in trade negotiation saying commercially meaningful. So what that means is you might not get anything that you want, but it is commercially meaningful to a sector. And I uh, pushed uh, the government in question time at the end of last week not to do a deal with the European Union unless they got a commercially meaningful outcome for dairy and for meat. I'm now told, and look, I've got to verify this, but the person that's tell, told me, I, I, I believe them, that before they went off to Europe, before the Prime Minister went off to Europe, they changed the negotiating mandate for dairy and meat from commercially meaningful to better than status quo. And so what that means is if you get just one extra pound of butter, you can do the deal. Now, the Prime Minister said there'll be about $600 million more sales opportunities for meat and for dairy by 2035. What she didn't tell everybody is there is within the quota, we're only allowed to sell a certain amount, there is a tariff rate there, and that tariff rate doesn't go away, and it means that, yep, uh, they might want our butter in Europe and our meat in Europe, but it will be prohibitively expensive because of that tax at the border and that doesn't come off. And that's why, although there are opportunities there, it's hard to see how New Zealand farmers can take advantage of them because it's a little bit like if you say, well, to Europe, if you want to sell butter to us from Europe, from Ireland or anywhere else, then good on you, but we're going to place a great big tariff when it gets here, people wouldn't buy it. And that's what's happening on the other side. And so a uh, very, very little for meat and for dairy. Which are our biggest sectors. So if there's quotas on that, if there's tariffs on that, there is no free trade in beef and dairy between Europe and New Zealand, right? No, that's, that's exactly right. The day that this agreement enters into force, every single product... Uh, can be sold to New Zealand without restriction as much as they want to sell, no tariff rates at all. That will never happen for dairy and beef in the other direction from so, New Zealand uh, whoa, to Europe. Whoa, whoa, hang on, Todd. Let me get this straight. So there are quotas and tariffs on our beef and dairy going into yep. Europe. Yep. But in return, we've traded away any quotas or tariffs for... European beef and dairy coming into New Zealand. That's right. We've we've never had uh, quotas, uh, and actually we've always had fairly low tariffs, but for every single product, uh, there will be free access to New Zealand. Look, that's a good thing. We do that in all free trade agreements. It's one of the things we give up for something in return. I was pushing... But it doesn't uh, sound like we got anything in return. Yeah, well, I was pushing the Prime Minister pretty hard last week to say, look, you know, from what I've seen, many parts of the agreement are good. Uh, you know, there are other areas that, uh, that that they're celebrating. So kiwi fruit go in there without restriction. Uh, the, the seafood sector, uh, you've also got wine, onions, surprisingly. They can all go in, there's no restriction. There are some other. But for the big, big win that we needed, dairy and meat, uh, we have got almost next to nothing. And you've got to remember, Sean, with our FTA with China, now for dairy, there is no restriction. As much as we want to sell them, as much as they want to buy, it goes in there without restriction. In the TPP agreement uh, that uh, we negotiated uh, before Donald Trump uh, pulled out, uh, there was a deal on the table. Everyone had agreed. New Zealand said at the 11th hour, no, 
uh, we're not happy with the access we've got. We're not going to agree. We kept talking for many months and finally got better access into Japan and America and so we're right. to do yeah. the deal. I was calling on the PM last week to say, look, if the deal is not good enough for dairy and meat, if it's not uh, commercially meaningful, bank the gains, ask the negotiators to keep talking but she made the decision that she thought it was good enough and we'll need to explain that to our farmers when yeah. she comes home uh, uh, but todd you know that the political situation in europe meant we were stuck in a slightly now or never position in terms well, of, of a trade deal with the europeans no I, look I, I don't accept that because you know it's always tough with europe yes but they are wanting to do trade deals. Now, one of the things we heard on TV One News the other night was that the government have said, well, you know, the EU um, wouldn't want to give away as much in, in dairy and meat because they're about to do a deal with Australia too. And anything they give us, they would then, the Australians would want as well. So reverse that. Wouldn't you sit there and say, look, we're not quite ready to do it. We don't think there's enough. Let the Australians get something and say we want it as well. The thing about trade deals is you are only as good as your next one and so uh, what happened here is that when we go to america or there's been you know the, the negotiations with india have stalled right the government said it's too hard but when you go to india or america or anywhere else and say listen for kiwi fruit and for wine and for seafood and for onions we want complete free access we got that with europe and say and for dairy and beef the other guys will say, well, you accepted a deal from the from the EU that gave you no access at all, so we're not going to give you any either. They've made it harder with this because of a rush at the end for future negotiators and future governments to get what we need. And as you said earlier, Sean, these are our big asks, but they're a big part of the economy. You know, think about if we didn't have dairy go and meat going into China at the moment, what kind of shape we'd be in? Look, also, of course, the Prime Minister now coming back to a big sort of summit of business of everyone in Australia. Uh, our closest partner, and the relationship has been strained or not as close as previously. Can we look in sure. terms of trade to some benefits from improving our relationship, Trans-Tasman? The, the, so, uh, I mean, trade with Australia is very good. They're a big partner at first, second, you know, with with. China, yeah. Um, the the um, the um, you know the the big summit the prime minister goes to happens every year. Uh, I, I was I was privileged to go to one at uh, one time when I was a trade minister and speak. Um, it hasn't been po as possible the last few years. It is really important. Look, that is an important relationship with us. I tell you what, I would have liked to have seen just coming back to the EU. If Australia is finding it as tough as we are mm. and the EU is trying to play us off against each other, why wouldn't you get together and say, hey, Australia, yeah. uh, we're the good guys, they're not, let's let's work this out together. But I tell you, in as far as what I would like to see with the PM's visit to Australia, is I think we see need to see much, much more cooperation, one around standards, because we can sell them whatever we want, but sometimes the standards get in the way, they're different on either side. And you know what? New Zealand should always reserve the sovereignty to make its own decisions, but the more we can align with things in Australia and Australia with us, the better it is for the New Zealand economy, the better it is for investment in Kiwi jobs. I hope that rather than just a lot of talk that you sometimes get out of these things, there are some substantive things that come forward around barriers coming down, uh, easier movement of people, recognition of services and qualifications and so on, and say, hey, has some of your 501s back, and by the way, stop pinching our nurses. <laughs> Look, I want to move on to another area where I'm not sure that we've leveraged all we can. There is clearly a geopolitical cold war in the Pacific, in our part of the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as you mentioned, Trump stymied, and I guess American business, stymied uh, their involvement in the TPP, which has been renamed the CTPPP something, because the Prime Minister didn't want to admit that she was backing something she marched against. Um, <laughs> sure, surely we should be leveraging with the US better trade deals yes. as we sit here yes. kind of deciding which way we go in this, in this conflict, this geopolitical conflict. Yeah, well, I, I see the commentary, uh, not only in New Zealand, around the world, is leading towards confusion about exactly where New Zealand sits and, and what we're doing. We saw the Prime Minister go in her three-minute speech to NATO talk a lot about 
China at the same time we didn't quite get the deal we wanted from Europe. L look, um, there are two things that need to happen in the Pacific, I believe. Uh, uh, number one is, yes, a trade deal is important for Pacific Island nations and more broadly with the US involved because it creates a framework, a common set of rules that we can all trade by, live by and rely upon. And when countries trade with each other and the trade is fair and equal, they are less likely to be in conflict with each other, number one. Number two, uh, look, I would hope that out of the Prime Minister's visit to the US and to Europe, she has convinced them to join with New Zealand and Australia and spend a lot more development assistance in Pacific Island nations. And look, New Zealand does a lot there, but when I had the opportunity to go, and I, we did a trade deal with the Pacific, and I was the trade minister at the time, and I said, well, I'm not going to make it hard. It's less about New Zealand. It, it is about developing nations, and those of them that are ready, let's go ahead. I'm not going to force others to until they're ready to. But the one thing they did say is whenever they do anything with us or Australia, it takes a long time. It's very, very difficult. And when they go, China and other countries come in there with the development assistance, it happens quickly and easily. We need the US and Europe to join with us and spend more money helping these countries develop so they are much more self-sufficient. And when we don't do that and we disappear, as Donald Trump did from the Pacific with TPP and other things, a gap is filled. And it is often filled with countries that we then end up finding our Prime Minister speaking against when she goes to the other side of the world. So much, much more is needed here. I agree with you, Sean. OK. Are you standing by your 6 out of 10 for this free trade deal or not free trade deal well, with you? Well, so, so here's the thing, right? Uh, from across the board for everything but beef and dairy, I give it 6 out of 10. For beef and dairy, I give it 2 out of 10. So quick maths gives it an average of 4 out of 10 at the moment. You know, there's talk out there saying, well, we'll be, we'll be able to upgrade it in the future. In my lifetime and your lifetime, Sean, we will not see dairy and meat upgraded in this agreement and we won't see New Zealand dairy and meat flowing freely into Europe. The PM said it's worth $1.8 billion to us per year by 2035, this agreement. Uh, that's good. That's a great thing for the New Zealand economy. It's worth $6.5 billion to the Europeans. We're a nation of 5 that million doesn't feel of 5 fair. people. Yeah. 500 million people, it's worth three times to them what it is to us. You know, we'll judge for ourselves just how good this deal is. All right. If uh, you guys were going to win the election next year, what would the yeah. trade priority be for a new national-led government? Well, well, two things. Bringing the, the US back into a deal in the Pacific, it's the only way New Zealand is likely to get a free, free trade deal with them. We're probably a little bit small otherwise, and we're nice people. Uh, but to bring them back in, and it would be through, you know, the, uh, the, the TPP. Here's the interesting thing. You said earlier the CPTPP, it's because the government didn't want to admit they were protesting against it. The TPP still sits there. In the case that they say they want to join it again, it would take a lot of persuasion. It just kicks off straight away. For me, though, the next thing would be India. So Australia just got a trade deal with India. They will sell them things and we will be at a great disadvantage. You know, you and I over the years, Sean, have had the odd glass of wine. If you want mm. New Zealand wine in India, it'll cost you 150% more because that's the tax, the tariff rate at the border. So Australia got that trade deal uh, negotiated during the lockdown. We haven't got one, and our government have said it's very hard, it's not a priority. If I become trade minister next year, that will be my number one priority because it is a billion people. They are hungry for the food, the protein we produce, and I think if you put effort in, there is a deal to be done there. Uh, and then uh, uh, thereafterwards, I think, uh, although there will be many priorities, it's taking all of the agreements we've got and operationalizing and making them work. Because, you know, if you sign a trade agreement, great, that's really, really good. But one of the other things we want to do is help businesses or push them to go and use those agreements more to grow the economy so we can trade more. We've done it very, very well with China. But, you know, the UK and all these other areas, particularly with the CPTPP, it's good, but the trade flows have not increased to the degree that a country like New Zealand needs them to. So as much effort will be in there. All right, Todd, maybe we'll have a cheap glass of uh, wine in uh, India uh, one day. I thank, you very, I thank you very much indeed uh, for your time this morning. That is Todd McClay. He's the National Party's trade spokesperson and a pretty deep dive there into the efficacy or the success of that free trade deal in Europe that doesn't include beef, lamb or dairy, which is the stuff we make the most of.